Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Now, today we are making another cool little loop sort of MoGraph animation. Actually, we will be animating a Yoshi egg exiting a tube and we're going to stretch the cube with the help of Lattice. Now, the Lattice modifier is extremely useful in many instances. There are some tutorials that use it for fish deformation, algae, that type of thing. Today, we'll be using it to stretch the tube that will pass our Yoshi egg. So, let's get into it. We're going to start off by deleting everything in the scene. I'm going to add a cube and I'm going to size it up just a little bit to 1.3. I'll press Ctrl 1 to put a subdivision modifier of 1 and I'm going to apply that modifier. Now I'm going to put another subdivision modifier that's going to be at let's say 2 and I'm going to put a cast modifier. In edit mode I'm going to press O for proportional editing and I'm going to just increase our selection like this to create a egg shape. I can go even further up like so. You can just restrain it just a bit like so. Control A for scale. Okay, it looks good enough. W to shade smooth. So we have a smooth form. This is going to be our egg. Now we're going to make the tube. The tube is going to be extremely easy. Let me first rename the object into egg. Now I'm going to shift A, cylinder, and I'm going to model it around the actual egg. I'm going to select both the top and lower faces, and I'm going to press I for indent. I'm going to bring it as close as possible to the egg, and then I'm going to go space and search for bridge edge loops. This is going to create a loop between the two faces. I can now select the outer faces by holding Shift, Alt and right clicking and S, Shift, Z, which is going to turn proportional editing off, S, Shift, Z and I'm just bringing it as close as possible, let's say to about there. Now I'm going to create the upper part of the tube, I'm just going to inset again, so I, just going to bring it up to about here. Select this edge loop, I again, just bring it out again over there. And I'm going to select the edges, so the one inside the tube, and the one that's inside of the actual tube. X and dissolve the edges. Control A to reset the scale, and I'm just going to put a bevel modifier, turning the angle, let's bring the offset to 0 0.17 and increase the segments to 2, put a subdivision modifier after it, shade smooth, yeah it's smooth enough, if not we are going to increase later. So these are the objects that need the interaction, now the lattice comes in right here. We're going to add a lattice object, which looks like this. Now, I want to parent the lattice object to the egg, because we will be animating the actual egg. So, I'm going to choose the lattice, shift choose the egg. I'm just going to move them out for a second. I'm going to resize the lattice, so it's outside of the actual egg. Shift select, control P object keeps transform on the egg. Now when I move it, the lattice is following it. There are a couple of ways we can do uh, this trick. One of them is to actually use a shrink wrap modifier and use it on the actual egg. We can then increase the resolution of the lattice object like so and then use the offset to just clip out of the actual egg. Now, if we move the egg inside, we still don't have anything happening. Okay, let's try moving it down. Now let's click on the tube, add modifier, add lattice. We're going to choose our lattice object, which is going to deform this way. However, we don't want that. It. So it's deforming very, very strangely. 
So what we can do right now is we'd rather use it without the actual shrink prep. So basically when it's passing, we see that there is no transformation. And now we can go into edit mode on the actual lattice itself. And we're going to choose the edges in the middle. Now, lattice behaves a bit strangely sometimes. So we'll make sure you go into wireframe mode and look for any inconsistencies. We're going to size it on the Z axis like so, or we can also use proportional editing that will help us out just a bit. Maybe do it like so, yes. Let's resize it to about here and that's fine. Now let's try moving it up and we can see it's actually deforming our tube. Now it's just a question of making the materials and the other elements in the scene, which is fairly easy. I'll be just making a very small island that the tube will be sitting on and we'll do a short, a really good material for Yoshi's egg. Now is the time to create the background elements. So I'll just speed through this part and we'll see how to create the Yoshi egg material. That's it, very simple, nothing too extreme. It's just going to be an element of our background. I'm going to add another mesh and I'm going to add a plane that's going to serve as our background. So I'm just going to lower it just slightly below the island. Shift A to add a camera. Uh, control A to set it from your viewport. And I'm going to change to autographic because usually these scenes work pretty well in autographic view. I'm trying to find out where my egg will be. So this seems a very good height. So I'll be going just a bit out. And I can also press R, X twice and correct the angle even more. And just bring up the camera like that. Now I'm going to just resize the plane so it just fills the frame, moving it around. Again, it's not the most optimal way of doing stuff, but for this, it will work. So now I'm going to animate the actual egg. So I won't be using any keyframes. I'll just be using gravity for a simple enough loop. I'm going to move the egg up there. I'm going to set a, in the physics tab, I'm going to put the rigid body. We just need to fold it down naturally, like so. And we're going to close the loop at 50 frames. We'll move these 50 frames. Let's press play. And let's see how the whole thing behaves. So we have the starting position and it falls down, gets absorbed by the tube, goes in fine. Let's just check that our tube is behaving correctly. So we don't have a lot of displacement happening from the lattice, which usually happens if the lattice is too close to the lattice object. But this one is working quite well. I'm just going to find the frame where the egg is just before, let's say just before the egg enters. So I'm going to try this one, just see if it clips with the frame. No, it doesn't. So that's frame 15. I'm going to move it to frame 15 and let's see if we get like a continuous egg drop like so maybe we can move the end even further back like this and yeah we have a continuous egg drop so now that we have our animation part done let's move it up into position to about here and what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to add the egg material the yoshi egg material so this is going to be the egg I'm going to add the tube material and I'm going to add the grass plus the earth materials too. And I'm going to do a very simple blue sky in the back. The most difficult one over here is the Yoshi egg, but there's actually a really good trick that can get you really close to the actual egg. I'm going to change to viewport shading so I can see just a bit better what's happening. I'm going to press Ctrl T to set up the texture coordinate mapping and image texture. Delete the image texture. I'm going to use a Voronoi texture. 
I'll be using a gradient texture and I'll be using a color ramp. I'm going to connect the color ramp to the base color. I'm going to connect the vector to the vector of the Voroni. Then I'm going to connect the distance to the vector of the gradient, change it from linear to spherical and the factorial to this to the factorial of the color ramp. I'm just going to close these positions over here, maybe even put it to, I think constant works fine. Just go in. I'm going to reduce the randomness and I'm going to reduce the actual scale to about 297. The reset scale. I'm going to increase our subdivision modifier just a bit more, but we do have a pretty good simulation of the actual egg. So I have the egg over here. I'm going to choose the white to be the like, slightly yellowish tint. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to put the black one to be a sort of darkish green. You can always manipulate these, you can lower the scale, I would definitely advise that because then you get a bit more different results and definitely, definitely put it from generated. And now we actually have a good Yoshi texture. Go so back into our camera view, this is how it looks. We're going to just add a bit of shine to this egg, increase the specular, and to put the specular thing to 0, 2. That's the, usually where I put it. I'm going to make the tube next, which is going to be dead easy. I'm just going to choose a random greenish color, maybe bring it just down a bit. Roughness, I'm going to put it to 4, the specular to 6, and the specular thing to 4. The green of the earth is just going to be a bit darker, so we have just a bit of contrast. So I'm going to make it like so. Drop the roughness just a bit, specular up. And the earth element is going to be just a plain brown element. Now, you can go a bit more advanced with the materials here. So they actually try to replicate what's happening in the actual Super Mario world. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just trying to so showcase the lattice deform function. I'm going to put a sort of light blue background and that's going to be basically it. I'm just going to put it into position so I see all of the displacements and materials. If I go into my render view, it's not working properly because I'm still in Eevee, so I have to change the cycles. I'm going to just increase the render samples just a bit. If you'd like to, the easiest way is to just put a sky texture, just change the angle slightly, put the turbidity to 6 and the strength to 5. Change the angle so you can find some interesting light options. And that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully this will help you out with maybe other animations that you have. You know how to use the lattice deform to create this elastic type of effect. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, do drop a like or leave a comment. I always appreciate those and see you in the next one. Bye.